Hi, it's Steve Lykin with Rocco Automation, and today we will take five to discuss best practices around your low voltage power distribution. With many control devices moving from 120 volts AC to 24 volts DC, you're probably noticing an increasing number of those devices which require an SELV or PELV power source, or maybe they require or st specify for use in an NEC class two circuit only. Some examples, controllers such as our Compact Logics, both old and, older and newer, sensors, um, and many safety devices have a class two requirement. And it's not just automation devices. Some network switches, laptops, cell phones, and many other devices have similar requirements. So what do these designations mean? ELV and self pelv is extra low voltage, and limiting voltage el eliminates electrical shock hazard. NEC class two takes ELV a little farther and specifies a power maximum of 100 VA, and limiting power eliminates a fire hazard. So aside from pure compliance reasons, what are some benefits of complying with NEC class two? Well, an end user or an OEM that specifies class two devices experiences safer electronics and reduced PPE requirements. Device manufacturers such as ourselves can manufacture smaller and smaller devices while still achieving very high reliability ratings and the ability to achieve the highest safety performance levels. And since UL has a focus on those same two hazards that NEC class two eliminates, specifically that electrical shock hazard and fire hazard, a panel shop that supplies NEC class two circuits for the termination of NEC class two devices easily complies with that portion of their UL 508A code set. Now that we understand the importance of self pelv and NEC class two, I have the pleasure of introducing an easy way to comply with these requirements and also help you develop a robust, flexible, and elegant low voltage distribution scheme. This is the 1694 electronic circuit protection system. We are feeding power to single and dual circuit protection modules where we can turn the circuits on and off. As we protect a circuit, the LED warns of a 95% load, it's flashing, as well as overcurrent, as well as when it trips and protects the circuit. As I reset the module, you can also see that it can protect against this in a short circuit condition immediately. Relative to our earlier conversation, several of these protection modules are capable of sourcing an NEC class two power circuit. And back to distribution, notice how we can distribute protected power and common, as well as expand the system to another control cabinet or area of the control system. Finally, let's find out for ourselves why the NEC says a fuse or circuit breaker is not adequate for this type of protection. Half amp fuse, already 0.75 amps, blue at about 8.8 .8 amps. A one amp fuse, take it up from the 0.8, 1, 1.3, 1.6, 1.7, a two amp fuse, two, two something, three, right about 2.9 or three, and a one amp DC circuit breaker, two and a half, four, five. We're already getting close to six on our ECP. And so we'll back it up just a little bit. Finally tripped a little bit over five. And of course, if we put the two amp on, we're already gonna be well over that six amps and our electronic circuit protector protected us well before that DC circuit breaker would have. So as we just learned, these mechanical devices require significant overcurrent to trip. And one more consideration. In the AC world, relatively infinite power is assumed to provide that overcurrent. In the low power world, it is very likely that you didn't oversize your power source enough to trip the protected device, and thus you are not protected at all. Thank you for the time to take five to discuss how we can elegantly distribute 24 volt power while protecting devices with strict power requirements. To learn more, please go to ab.com and search electronic circuit protection or 1694 to access product selection and other do documentation. And as always, your Rockwell Automation salesperson and distributor will be happy to assist you.